Okay, now, let, let me ask you one other question, Barbara, because I, I know that there, there's another situation coming up in New Zealand uh, about yes. the helicopter hunting. Can you kind of fill us in on that a little bit? Well, again, a story that we've been following for over a year now. Uh, you'll recall there was a huge comp controversy that broke out in New Zealand over heli hunting. And when we're talking about heli hunting, we're talking about anything from using a helicopter to assist a, a hunter to access a hunting area, to using a helicopter to herd, chase down animals, uh, and uh, put put hunters down and then push animals toward the hunters. Those are those are all things that have been practiced in New Zealand. There have even been cases where hunters have been instructed to shoot from the aircraft, which is illegal. No matter what anybody tells you, you are not allowed to do that in New Zealand. Uh, the situation is uh, the spotlight was put on these kinds of practices. There were local hunters who were complaining about uh, abuses because they said that uh, uh, heli hunting operators were flying in over uh, foot hunting uh, foot hunters uh, and flying in and shooting animals that these foot hunters had been stalking for hours and climbing up the mountains to get. So there's a real debate in the country over this. What you need to know as a hunter is the permits that heli hunters were using, which are called Huero permits, for wildlife, uh, uh, oh, now, now I've forgotten what it means, uh, but basically it's, it's a, a permit for uh, operators to remove uh, wildlife using a helicopter for commercial meat purposes. There was a, a loophole in the regulations that uh, hunting operators have been using for many, many years, for 30 years, and the Department of Conservation in New Zealand has always turned a blind eye towards it. But lately, because of this controversy, uh, they've been forced to really look at those regulations, and they have ruled that Huero permits, wild animal recovery operation permits, are not to be used for uh, sport hunting. So those permits are now explicitly excluding sport hunting. The DOC, the Department of Conservation in New Zealand, is now creating uh, permits specifically for heli hunting. They're creating concessions uh, with the uh, mapping, uh, mapping charts and everything on, on DVDs that they will give their operators. Uh, they're going to issue these concessions and the permits uh, and new regulations specifically for heli hunting. Here's the catch. The season for tar typically starts in May. Mm. Those permits will not be issued until July. Mm. In the interim, the Department of Conservation has decided to allow the operators who have applied for these permits to go ahead and operate without them and they're considering considering this interim period a period of legal operating under those circumstances okay uh, now, now barbara i know you went to the shot show did you get did you get some feedback from because uh, i said i know uh, we have some good friends down there in new zealand uh, colin rayner uh who is uh, specifically interested in uh, tar especially uh, they, uh, how do they feel about that well, I've, I've talked to, I didn't go to the SHOT Show, but I was at SCI, and I talked to a, different, a few different operators there. And basically, the operators are split. There are operators who can do tar and chamois hunts on foot because they have access to private properties where it can be done. Okay. And many of them are against using helicopters to do anything other than access the area. Uh, and uh, there are many operators, there are 16 who applied for these new permits. There are some of them who really rely on that kind of hunting, and the more hunters that they can put through doing this and the faster they get their trophies, uh, the more money they can make. So there are some operators that are, are really making a, a, a living off of this kind of thing, and they don't want to see the new regulations exclude their ability to uh, push animals or to chase animals and so forth. 
Uh, so th there's there's a real split here among operators themselves in New Zealand. I understand that the New Zealand uh, Operators Association, their membership is really split over this as well. So it's it's a cantankerous uh, uh, controversy that they've got going on over there. Yeah, and, and the, I understand the bottom from line is some of those new folks. regulations will be issued by July. For now, during this interim period, they're the only restrictions are they they're not supposed to fly over foot hunters and they are not supposed to allow hunters to shoot from the aircraft until until july until the new regulations are put out those are the only restrictions on heli hunting okay all right well i i know i know we're going to hear a lot more about this because this is a much wider story and we probably need to devote more time to it because i i know that there's, we'll probably bring on some folks from New Zealand and, and see if we can't get a little feedback. Now, I understand that judicial system down there is a little bit different than ours. So if they have a problem with what's taking place, it may be more mitigated even than ours is. I, I'm not sure. I know that you've had dealings down there before yourself. But I, I know it's going to be a bigger, wider story than what we've covered so far. And I know that thing in New Zealand is going to go on for a while. So we may yeah. want to pick that up again in the future, Barbara. Well, we'll see what happens in, in July when they issue the, the, the permits and the new regulations, what, what new controversy occurs then. Okay. Thank you, Barbara, for coming on. See you again next week. Thank you.